Hi, Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Dom Le. Dom Le is a writer and obviously an artist. And what's so cool about his portfolio on his art station is that it's heavily project based. He has two projects the Journey to the East, and he also has the Blue November um, project. I do know that he has the Journey to the East um, published as a book, so it's essentially complete. Um, and I do find it impressive that he was able to keep that consistency in his work. Now for the Blue November part here, or the Blue November project, I think it's still kind of ongoing. And maybe he'll he'll make it into some kind of book as well, because he does have like an art book of his, again, Journey to the East um, thing. And yeah, I do like that consistency. Um, he doesn't post often in his art station, um, so I do recommend you follow him on his Instagram. I will I will be linking all of his links in the description below. Um, and I think he, a lot of his work is heavily influenced by this watercolor painter named Thomas um, Schaller. Um, I remember hearing or seeing this guy's or that guy's work during my Archie um, years just because he does a lot of architectural types of renderings and he also has like a lot of personal work um, I, I think that guy has a blog too but I, I can see a lot of that or I can see a lot of scholars style in Dom Lay's work as well especially in his Blue November project um, very, it, it does feel like, a, like an actual watercolor painting and I can see a lot of yellows and blues or yellows and purples they're always kind of complementary to each other and it's very common in watercolor paintings to have that kind of orange yellow and that blue violet um, present in a painting um, and it, it does have a very nice contrasting feel um, it kind of balances the the warms and the cools so yeah and you'll notice whenever watercolor artists do their shadows it's not in black it's usually done with a blue or a violet purple um, so, yeah. And he does photo bash his work sometimes, or he does, he has a mixed media kind of effect or kind of approach, but he got, he tries to put it all together in a more watercolor esque kind of fashion, in that it has a very wash like feel where it feels kind of loose and very. I'm um, almost watery um, and I'm guessing he has like a multitude of approaches. I mean look, look at the way he does these figures here Right They're very loose. It's very common in watercolor paintings to so just um, Keep the the people generally loose, right? And again this complementary thing of the orange yellows and the the blue purples, right? Um, and he's not a very detailed kind of guy, which I do like He's very impressionistic and again, he has the kind of wash-like feel, and he was able to achieve that in, I'm guessing, Photoshop. Um, and it looks cool, right? And sometimes we'll see him actually use photos, and for this, for these figures, I think he actually used a Photoshop um, filter. So he's kind of, um, um, he, he's not afraid to use like different techniques, he doesn't have to paint everything. I mean, obviously, he has to paint over something, but... He's not limited to just purely painting. You know, he is a digital artist in a way. Um, where he's a bit more well-rounded, or not well-rounded, but... Um, um, it's kind of standard concept art approach where the technique doesn't really matter for as long as the idea is there, you know? Um, so he's not afraid to use like a bunch of photos. He'll eventually paint over it anyway. Um, and look at the way he does the flooring here. It's almost like a wash, a watercolor wash, where you can see this kind of fade out, blurred effect, and it usually runs vertically. Because um, when I, when you do watercolor paintings, you kind of you kind of have the canvas um, tilted up, so the water kind of flows down. So it does have that effect. And even in this kind of wash thing, you can see different hues. So it does give that effect of the merging of different colors whenever the water flows down the paper. And he was able to do that with his, again, his uh, 2D digital paintings or artwork. A portrait of some kind of character in his Blue November project. Um, again, the yellow-orange with the blues, right? And you can tell he did do some photos here. 
Um, but I notice how whenever he does his environments, it, he uses a very stable kind of um, frame or composition where it's not super dynamic. And it's super common again with the watercolor paintings. You know, they kind of, they almost kind of flatten out the entire environment and it's not totally accurate, you know? It almost becomes some kind of editorial um, illustration in a way, right? What I do like about his work also is his focus on narrative, on story. I mean, he is a writer after all, so it kind of makes sense that it will transfer to his um, um, visual artwork as well, right? Here you can, you can actually see that photo or a bunch of photos kind of bashed together. Very, very typical, but the way he puts it all together, it has that very artistic kind of feel. It's not just a... It's not some kind of matte painting or something, you know? Um, Excuse me. Even again, if the composition is kind of simple, very, very standard watercolor types of um, frames or compositional shit, um, he still has a bit of story in them, right? If it's not through the character, it's probably through the, the lighting, right? Now this one's, um, you can still see a bit of that use of photos. But he, he does break it down to such a level that it's kind of hard to see. Now these are actually more like custom shapes, I believe. Or maybe he just painted one and then he just copied it layer by layer, right? Duplicated it. Um, he does have a bit of brush variety. Well, not really. There's a bit of texture in his work. Lots of splatter kind of brushes and he likes to use a brush where it kind of breaks off um, with the pen pressure. And it does give that watercolor like effect because whenever you kind of lighten your pen grip or your brush grip um, when kind of dragging paint through paper you can get that very kind of textured look where the the paint is no longer kind of consistent and it becomes kind of dry and he does try to put the same or he, he, tr he tries to do or create the same feeling whenever he does his um, digital paintings now this one reminds me a bit of um Alvaro Castane, Castagnet, <laughs> that's how I pronounce his last name. He's another watercolor painter, one of my favorite, he is, not, not one, he is my favorite watercolor um, artist. And this scene does remind me of his work. Although for Alvaro, uh, for Alvaro's work, um, he does use more reds. I've noticed that he loves very, very strong, passionate types of reds. And very, he's, he's more into like, heavy contrast as well. He's not afraid to use blacks as well, so that's kind of cool. Um, anyway. But but for um, Dom Lay, he does have, like, I think his favorite watercolor artist would have to be Thomas Scholar. Um, photo bashed, right? Maybe he added some kind of filter. I'm guessing he did kind of filter this a bit. And then he painted over it. Again, that texture brush. Um... Right, and he's not afraid to so, to show to show that um, brush spacing. It does have its have its own texture, you know, when you uh, leave it as it is, and it does have its appeal. You know, it's not too bad. And he's not afraid to he's not afraid to not show detail. You know, where it's just left as if it's not a solid kind of color, he'll just leave it as a wash, and he'll even blend it. Almost like it's, well, like it's watercolor, right? So he's not super detailed and it is kind of my thing anyway. <laughs> awesome brush pacing here. Fuck, where is it? There you go. Oh, fuck. Right? And again, the warms and the blues. Um, I'm not sure how close he is to finishing his Blue November project, but according to his Instagram, his Instagram kind of description or bio, it's still kind of an, an, an uh, it's still an ongoing project. So now this one he does have way more pinks, not a lot of warmth in this painting. Maybe in this kind of castle or building, but that's pretty much it. Even the way he does like the trees, it kind of looks like watercolor, you know. But obviously in this case, I think he's using some kind of custom shape with a few extra brush strokes on its own layer, right? 
And look at how we did this kind of wash like effect. Um, I'm guessing he used the mixer brush for this one. Um, Cause a, a smudge tool would be a bit too harsh. Um, and I'm guessing he does this last when he's done with the, the painting, when, when he's done with kind of clarifying the main kind of shapes. Maybe he'll usually do it after because that's how I would do it. I would usually do the whole mixing part or the majority of the mixer brush kind of effect after I'm done painting or after I'm done laying out the major parts of a painting, you know? Um, again, more narrative art here. More about the story. So he did start out with a grayscale painting sketch and then he added some colors and obviously added more detail. Um, Ooh, more statues, right? It's a very- you can still tell he did use a photo, but he kind of- even the way he kind of erased the edges, it's not even that clean. But it gets the job done. And I do like this approach whenever you're coming up with concepts. You know, you shouldn't be afraid to, um... Um, the idea should always come first, right? You know? And since he's more of a writer-artist, writer or slash artist, he is going to be heavily focusing more on the narrative side of things, right? So I think for me, what's inspiring me, first of all, again, is his focus on project related work where a lot of his art pieces are based or go under one project. So there is that consistency, even though it's kind of not everything will be kind of top tier, but the fact that it's consistent, the fact that you can kind of see what he's trying to go for and you can kind of be in that world of his. It's something that I would like to... Um, I mean, he is essentially world building and that's so typical of, um, well, concept art, right? Or concept artists. Uh, they like building worlds. Um, so that's kind of inspiring me. The consistency of his work, the project-basedness <laughs> of his work, but also his... Um, his openness to not be a purist because sometimes I feel like I'm be becoming that person where I'm such a where I'm so traditional well not traditional but dogmatic <laughs> maybe that's more appropriate dogmatic right I should be open to a, um, other techniques to save time right and if I want to build worlds I need to find a way to save time you know because sometimes I feel like I'm using my focus on 2d painting because I do want to actually develop my 2D painting skills, but s sometimes I can kind of feel like I'm becoming too much of it, where I'm trying to be more of a purist than an artist. Oof, right? So the art, the story has to come first. So he did start out with a grayscale painting, and then he just added some colors. And again, not much detail, right? He sets the values in the beginning, and then he'll add a bit of mood with the, um, with the colors, right? But you technically have to start with the values, with the grayscale values. Um, more storytelling, the way he does or focus the uh, the lights on certain areas, right? I think his Blue November projects involve a lot of, uh, well, statues. <laughs> um, right? But you can, you can feel the world, right? It's... Even though it's not super rendered, even though it's kind of rough, I can feel like I'm there. And the fact that he th he doesn't have just one piece, he has like a bunch of these. So it, it kind of gives you that feeling of... Well, not feeling, it makes you kind of understand what he's trying to go for, right? Um, like the number of paintings he does or the number of art pieces he produces compensates for the essentially the lack of detail in a lot of his work, right? Because he's more heavily focused on the story, on the narrative. So when it comes to the design per se, it's it's not fully fledged, you know? Um, maybe for his journey to the East, he does have a few more design types of work, especially when it comes to like weapons or characters. Um, but most of it is still kind of story-based, right? Um, Yeah, he has way more design when it comes to it, when it comes to his journey to the east compared to his Blue November project. Uh, anyway, 
right? Um, so now we're technically moving on to his journey to the east. Um, he, for his earlier pieces on this project, I see a lot of blues, but eventually they become warmer and warmer, you know? Um, maybe it's because it's a night scene, but... You know, I've seen a lot of watercolor painters um, focus on like ship, yard, or dock type of scenes, you know? So I think he is, you know, definitely influenced by a lot of watercolor artists, not just Thomas Washcolor, right? Again, not much detail, but he has a wash-like effect. Even the way he does the foreground here, it kind of fades out. Very watercolor-esque. Um, oh, I love the glowing ships here. Very, very magical. Almost fantasy-like. Um, right? I mean, look at that. These figures are essentially silhouettes, but it looks magical, doesn't it? Right? Ah, it's so pretty. Ah, that's super cool. Anyway. Another piece here. Is this a photo? It's hard to say. Maybe not. But I do see a bit of... Um, I think he did use a couple of photo filters to achieve this kind of wet-like look. And for these words, it's not painted. He did use a PNG, right? Even for this, maybe he did use like a photo. It's kind of hard to say. But again, look at that magical thing that's happening right now, right? Especially kind of behind this whole architectural concept. There's something happening in the sky. And again, that complementary thing between the, the blues and the the reds or the blues and the yellow-orange, right? Super magical. And look at how unrendered it is. Look at how raw and basic it is. Well, not basic, but it's, uh, it's not meant to be clean, but the story remains, right? Again, that very, very fantasy kind of world here. Very magical-esque. Okay, now he starts to get more into detail a bit. Where he's trying to design, I guess, the characters or their costume design, right? You can tell some photo bashing here and there. But it kind of makes sense. It's, th this is typical kind of concept art stuff, so I'm not surprised, right? It helps save time. The foot is kind of off, but, you know, makes sense, right? Uh, headdress design, maybe mask design as well. Um, maybe a bit of character development, perhaps? Look at how rough it is. But over and over again, it kind of adds to the the world. So it uh, he, he does compensate by the amount of work that he does. And because um, if you have just one piece, you're not going to really understand what he's trying to say. But if you have like a bunch of these, um, and what's so cool is that it's it's not even fully, uh, I've said this multiple times already, it's not fully painted, it doesn't have to be, but even a lot of his work is kind of rough looking, right? But he was able to finish a project, and it actually looks good overall, or not overall, but together. Like they have, like they all work together to, gosh I can't talk today, fuck. They all work together to communicate that one project idea. So that's kind of cool. And um, maybe this is a lesson for me to not be so... To not be such a perfectionist, right? Because that's always kind of a common thing that we tend to experience as artists. Is trying to give our best always. And um, like we always have high standards, which is good. But sometimes it does get in the way. Um, character concept. Some kind of scene here. Um, this guy's maybe selling some kind of sword. The face is photo bashed in, right? And it, it still has the kind of watercolor look where um, the the background, the white background, is kind of showing a bit, right? So it has that vignette kind of thing. Okay, a bit of creature design here of a kind of. It's a snake slash komodo dragon. Fuck. Right? Let 
Guys, look at how rough these are. And yet, they work, right? And that's what matters. They work. Together. So he does have quite a lot of pencil sketches. Um, figuring out the design of this kind of creature. They actually look pretty good. Right? Some silhouette concepts of the same creature, right? Fast, agile serpent. So it is kind of a snake. Almost alien-like. Whoa. And it's kind of a lizard as well, so. <laughs> right? Side view of this character. And his journey to the East project is... It's more Middle Eastern. Maybe a bit of North African. Um, Egyptian. Concepts. Even a bit of South Asian, but not a lot of not east asian right it's more middle eastern central asian and north african um okay it may be a bit of greek ish but that's not really asia anymore it's well, it's it's close to asia right but it's sort of too close i feel so close to you right now dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> uh you're not funny dave you're not funny um Right? Awesome. So this one is more of a keyframe. Egyptian-esque. A bit. A night scene. And again, these flying ships. They look more like sharks. Reminds me of the Atlantis film by Disney. Um, again, look at how rough that or this painting is. It's so chaotic, right? But you kind of get it, you know. And he does have like a weird way of cropping his frames. I, I expected more like um, longer horizontal shots, but sometimes he'll go for almost like a square shot, which is kind of weird for me, but hey, it works. Uh, the idea, again, it's still there, you know. And this one, this character here does look a bit more sci-fi. So that's kind of weird, but... Um, now this one feels more, it's South Asian, like Indian a bit, but the Middle Eastern also, just because of the, the dome architecture, right? Now we have a marketplace. Um, there is a mech here, so I'm not sure what that thing is doing in the journey to the east. Maybe, is this journey to the east? I'm not sure. Um, fuck. Right? Awesome. It still has that kind of watercolor feel. Um, it feels very impressionistic, right? But again, his techniques, it's, it's, it's a mix of everything, you know? And um, it's almost like he does whatever it takes for as long as the idea makes sense or is there. And he doesn't, he doesn't, he, it, it seems like he doesn't care so much about the, uh, the process. Well, obviously he does care a bit, but he's not picky. And he's definitely not a purist. Um, nice pigeons. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Now this one reminds me of Prince of Persia, um, the film. Uh, the sand part where everything was kind of falling down, right? Very, very epic. Again, it does have that watercolor feel, especially in the edges, right? Oh shit, they're being chased by some kind of... Um, Ghosts of the past. Whoa. Epic. So there's a guy in a horse running away from a kind of explosive thing. <laughs> right? I love the way he did the birds here. You know how the light captures some of their wings? And it feels like this piece is kind of moving, right? They have a gun, so that's kind of weird. It's such a weird place. <laughs> it's kind of a mix between fantasy and sci-fi. Hmm. Right? Because it does have like creatures and stuff, but uh, it does... This guy has a fucking gun, so sci-fi? It's mostly fantasy. 
Oh, he did start out with a, a simple grayscale sketch and then he just painted and bashed over it. Um, a marketplace. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, shit. It, no, this one is more of a keyframe. Again, they have guns with swords. Now, this is N-Mechs or androids. Well, well, not androids, but mechs, right? Hmm, huh, this is so weird, but I like it. <laughs> and again, look at how rough looking it is, but overall, it makes sense. And again, he likes to play with that lighting bit here, right? Oof. And it's very deliberate with where he wants to add this kind of dash or this kind of line of light, right? It really helps add to the uh, the story. And it does drive your eyes to whatever he wants you to focus on. Even the way it hits the boot, the boot, the boots, fuck, the boots of this person, right? You can see a bit of that reflected lighting kind of in the bottom of the hand and even in the back of this guy's coat and sword and you can even see a bit of that dust uh, whenever it does kind of uh, falls through some kind of streak of light you can see this kind of effect right wow awesome so this is the last piece we're going to review um, or check out of Dom Lay This, this scene is pretty cool. Again, look at the amount of, or the lack of detail, but but it still works in terms of storytelling. Um, the lighting does play a big role. Um, I think we have one of his, one of his um, flying ships here. Um, reminds me a bit of Treasure Planet. Um, is it a Disney or a DreamWorks film? Fuck. One of my favorite films. Um. And it did like that cat captain. She's kind of cute and hot. <laughs> I'm not a furry, just to be clear. Um, anyway, I love this painting. Um, it's very, very raw. It still does have that watercolor feel. Look at how standard the, uh, the perspective is. It's not super complicated, but it gets the job done, right? Um, the lighting, again, does play a big role. And... I like seeing this kind of brush spacing. You know, it adds its own natural texture in the end. And he likes to use a lot of texture splattered brushes. Um, it makes his paintings look a bit more natural. And the way he does or play with the mixer brush, maybe probably in the end, it helps to add that blending fluid-like feel to his paintings. Again, it's still very watercolor-esque, right? Even though it's not fully watercolor-esque, just because it's a, 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 a good chunk of his painting will look a bit more opaque just because he uses a variety of techniques, but overall, it still has that kind of natural feel, right? And again, he likes to add some birds just because... Oh, pigeons? And look at how rough it was done, right? It doesn't have to be super clean, bro, but if you check out his portfolio, I mean, the amount of work there is... It's awesome, right? And it actually feels pleasing to the eyes, seeing everything together, right? And you gain a lot of experience by doing this sort of thing. So, this is a call to action for me. And I think in his Instagram, he does say he wants to inspire people to uh, do the same, to tell their own stories. So, I think he's doing a good job. Um, when it when it comes to that thing, because I'm kind of inspired right now, right? <sighs> anyway, because <laughs> look at it. I mean, he only has two projects essentially, but because he has like a lot of work in in each of them, it it's just impressive to see that consistency, to see that um cohesiveness in his work, right? So that's it for this uh, art review of Dom Lay check out his he does have a gum road he has a couple of tutorials um he also has an instagram he calls himself the layered painter over there um i will be linking again all of his links in the description below so thank you for watching
keep drawing, keep painting, and stay free.